First up on the focus at four, Islamic extremists armed with guns and throwing grenades stormed the Radisson Blue Hotel in Mali's capital this morning. Yeah, big breaking story overnight, and UN officials now are saying at least 27 people were killed in that attack. The investigation into those attacks is, is ongoing, but officials have confirmed that 12 bodies were found in the basement, 15 bodies found on the second floor, and that's before the building has even been totally cleared. So they are still going room to room, still checking for more of those casualties. And at least two extremists are among the dead counted so far. No Americans are reported to have been killed in this attack, at least at this point. Witnesses are saying that the attackers were shouting Ahala Akbar or God is great, which is that jihadist battle cry. And heavily armed troops still have that area surrounded at this time. So still a developing story there. We'll have much more coming up at 5 mm -hmm. and of course on the CBS Evening News at 530. Let's give you the update on Paris now. France's Senate has voted to extend a state of emergency for three months after last week's deadly attacks. It's been one week now since right, that's happened. Right, a week. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And so while they're under this state of emergency, that means that the police it can arrest people, they can conduct those searches, mm -hmm. and they can forbid the movement of purses and vehicles at specific times and places. So uh, really giving them a good bit of control in this time of fear. Absolutely. And it was recently discovered that two of the three suicide bombers in the attacks on France's national stadium actually passed through Greece on the same day last month. Prosecutors said in a statement that both men were checked by authorities on October 3rd in Greece. One of those bombers was identified by the passport laying next to his dead body, which linked him to his processing in Greece back in October. Investigators, though, are still trying to figure out whether the passport was real or if it was fake and if it actually belonged to the attacker himself. And so far, just one of the suicide bombers at France's National Stadium has been formally identified by name. Soon after the attacks in Paris, uh, many parents took to social media asking for advice on how to talk to their kids about these horrible events. Yeah, parenting experts are stressing that the age of children and their temperament is really what determines and how much you should actually be sharing with them about the events like what happened overnight at the hotel or even what happened in Paris. Yeah, so experts say, number one, limiting that media exposure is key. Kids younger than five probably just shouldn't be told. Six to 11 year olds just need those basic facts. Parents should also communicate to their children an openness and, and willingness to talk. Don't shut them down with those questions. You know, answer them and listen to their feelings. Absolutely, and experts are saying that reassurance is also extremely important in this kind of stuff. Children will begin to wonder if they're safe and they may have some fear that something will happen to them. So you should communicate that you're doing everything you can to keep them safe, but do not give false assurances. I did some work with the Red Cross and they mm -hmm. always told us that when you're at, in, it doesn't have to be something like the terrorist attacks. It right. could be a tornado event or even during a hurricane closer to the Gulf Coast that you should be as honest as you possibly can, but depending on the age, like you said, you can limit some stuff, but don't lie to them. You can reassure that you're doing the most you can to right. keep it safe and let them know what's happening. But I think it again, it just depends on that age where you kind of determine exactly how far you want to go into that kind of stuff. Of course, a lot of questions about that. I can imagine that as a parent, it's 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 tough to address those things. And these kids are going to come with questions and they're going to hear these whispers at school and not know quite what the facts are. So I think it's a great idea that children should know they can come to their parents for the facts. Absolutely. They can clear up all those rumors they've heard. Of course, when it comes to teens, it's very likely that they've heard a lot of details through social media and news coverage. You, you really can't keep them away from that. And that's why you don't that. want to be caught in a lie. Right. Uh, you know, you're saying one thing, but then they look at Facebook or even on TV. They can they easily fact else. check you, so you should be their Absolutely. fact check. Absolutely. All right. Hey, uh, let's get on to some lighter news. That now that we're entering the weekend, Thanksgiving travelers can expect busier airports and more congested highways this year, and it's all because of a stronger sure. economy and the gas prices that we're having right now. Everybody can afford to make that Absolutely. road trip home. 46.9 million Americans are expected to go at least 50 miles away from home over Thanksgiving weekends. A lot of people hitting the roads, hitting the airports. That's the largest number since 2007, according yeah. to AAA. Almost 90% of drivers will be driving this year since gas prices are so low. The national average right now, it's about 2.15 a gallon. It's a lot lower here a in Bryan College yeah. Station. Families driving at least 300 miles will save 
about $12 in fuel this holiday. So it, it's that $12, sure, and that maybe doesn't sound like much, but I feel like the, the mentality it, yeah, of it, it's just, the mentality you of it, you're just saving. hitting the road. Absolutely. You're hitting the road. Uh, about 25.3 million passengers will fly to their holiday destinations. That is up 3% from last year. So travel by cruise, trains and buses, all expected to significantly decrease. Well, delays are to be expected oh. during the travels. And if your flight is delayed, canceled, or you miss a connection, make sure to uh, notify customer service immediately, mm. call your airline, just keep it track. You know, you know how this stuff goes. Just oh, stay in touch. Stay in touch. There are things you can do, but that is that. That's just an annoying situation. But what you can also do, apps like Hotel Tonight and Priceline are useful in finding those last-minute hotel discounts in case you do get stuck in that situation, which we hope you don't. Bottom line, I love that because I love the fact that more people are going to get home yes. and can afford to get home, see the loved ones for Thanksgiving, eat a lot of food, and then go shop. Shop to you. And back. then go shop. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to do a lot more. Kathleen's got free music Friday coming up just after the break, and then we'll take another look at that chilly Saturday forecast that we're going to have.